Okay, hold on. Okay, so I just want to welcome you all to our program today. So the thing that's amazing about doing this Mofia programming is that, you know, at Shul, when you see people, you don't realize some of the hidden talents that many of our Shul members have. And what a lot of you don't realize when you see Joanna and Shul, if you see Joanna and Shul, <laughs> um, is that Joanna happens to be a world-renowned food blogger. Really? At least in my world. At least in my world. Just to give you an example, I was in Paris recently with two of my kids, and I'm texting Joanna from Paris about where do I go for the best ice cream? Where do I go for this? And literally, I was doing a food tour with Joanna, who was in Israel at that point. She's like, oh, this weekend, this, this croissant store is having a special with ice cream mixed with food batter, cookie batter, dough, and... So we raced over there. So it's really just amazing. And to match for her knowledge, she also takes incredible pictures of all these things and has just fascinating stories. So without further ado, I just want to introduce Joanna Blum. For those of you who don't know her, for those who do, you're going to see her in a whole different way now when you see her in shul and you're going to be emailing her every time you go to Israel and want the name of the best restaurant to go to. I guarantee you. So thank you, Joanna, for agreeing to do this, and we're so happy to have you. My pleasure. Um, so uh, Rob and I like to travel. Um, occasionally, I prefer to travel without him uh, because um, he gets a little tired of um, schlepping with me to um, every pastry shop and um, bakery. Um, and um, and then he now he's blaming me that he um, has gained a lot of weight since we've met. But as I say to him, I will stop tying you up to the chair and force feeding you all these things. Um, <laughs> so what we're going to do today is um, I just picked out some interesting photos that I have taken over the years of um, uh, wonderful things that I have. Uh, uh, discovered and, and ate. Um, and um, now, um, most of the things that I'm going to show you are kosher. I'm not showing any meat, um, but some restaurants um, here and there might not be kosher restaurants. So this is just uh, for us to admire. Um, I don't necessarily, um, uh, I'm not asking you or telling you to go and uh, eat things that are not uh, kosher. Um, so we're going to visit a few different um, places today. So we start um, in Tokyo. Um, Rob and I have been to Tokyo um, three times now. And I have to say, no one prepares food. Um, really, no one does anything quite like the Japanese. The attention to detail is incredibly impressive. Um, it's a country that is fascinating. First of all, there are beautiful things to see, but um, going to a restaurant there is really a treat. So this first picture, um, I found this cute little cafe, it was called the Kyupat Cafe. Um, Japanese women, especially young girls and young women, um, love everything that is cute. Um, so this cafe, as you see, this is a plate and you get a menu and you choose what treat you want. So this here, I chose a French macaron, but what they do here is they basically, instead of just plopping it down on, in the middle of the plate, they create a necklace. So here, these little pearls, that's whipped cream, and you have the macaron that's also stuffed with whipped cream fruit and they also create a whipped cream bracelet here now i also chose another dish 
macaron and two pieces of chocolate. And that came looking as rings. This is chocolate. This is a caramel chocolate and a lemon macaron. And this was a hazelnut chocolate. And again, dressed up with whipped cream as pearls holding the bracelet. Now, this was a pudding store in Tokyo. The pudding is served in eggshells that come in an egg carton. This was a strawberry pudding, custard, chocolate, caramel. Each one has whipped cream on top. And you just scoop it up with a little spoon and it was delicious, but I just found it so incredibly creative. Never seen anything quite like it. Excuse me, do you hear me? Yep. I don't see anything on the screen. Really? Nothing. Does anybody else see things? What am I supposed yeah. to see? I only see myself. I see it. I see it. I don't see anything. No, I see everything. What should I be? Should I have touched? I mean, I have it on. I have the screen on. I have the voice on now because I unmuted myself. You, I'm looking. I'm looking at myself. I had you on the screen. Now what? Did you, you um, did you uh, uh, do the video? Or is you is there a slash on your little video camera on the top? A slash? Yes, yeah, seeing that the video. It is, should be video so camera that's crossed out. I'm looking at lemons or oranges. Is that right? Now Correct. I'm putting a tart. Right? You see a picture yes. of a tart. Should I continue? Okay. Yeah, continue. So we're, we're still in Tokyo. So this pastry shop, uh, we're going to see it again when we go to Paris. Um, this might not look like much, but this was the most delicious thing. A very, very thin tart with super thin slices of a clementine. Mm. Uh, and it was just, it was exquisite. Um, Tokyo again, um, this was a pistachio tart. And what I found really uh, terrific about it that, I mean, it's, it's, it's a regular, uh, it's, it's like a little dome, uh, vanilla cream inside and pistachio cream. And you could see crumbled at pistachios on top. But I thought that adding these pieces of dill um, was, they were creative and it added really um, like an added nice flavor um, to the pistachio tart. Okay, now we are in Germany. Um, this, um, I took a picture of it. This was a bread basket. Um, and I loved how this bread was served. It came in this wooden box on hot stones two different types of bread. And then you had butter here and you had these greens with scissors so that you could trim the greens yourself and add them to the, to the bread. I thought that was really a, a very cool way of serving bread. Now, this was um, when we traveled through Germany, we stayed in a hotel, um, that was in the uh, southwest of Germany. And this was an incredible dish. Um, this was a variation of garden cucumbers. You have layers of cucumbers, pickled, full pickled and half soured pickled. So you have three different layers of cucumbers and pickles, buttermilk, wild herbs, marinated ginger, those are the ginger pieces, mustard seeds, and wasabi. And not only it was beautiful, but it was delicious. This dessert was um, their take on black forest cake. And it was delicious, but what I found to be incredible, you have the cherry, 
And right here, so you have like this gold little piece to dress up the, the stem of the cherry. And right here, this is not a pit. They somehow extracted the pit, but you couldn't even see how. And right here, this was like a homemade soft peanut. Um, and it was, I, I, it, I was blown away by, by this cherry. And this is Berlin. This is a, uh, a place called Rogatsky. It's a very old appetizing store. Um, and this was um, apple pancakes. You had lox. This apple pancake was with white fish, cream cheese, and another uh, type of a, uh, like a, a cream cheese with vegetable. It was wonderful. Okay, this is Moscow. I love beets. Um, and this, as you can see, this was just like a regular restaurant. Rob and I got hungry after a day of touring. We didn't want the whole production. We just wanted to have a little something to eat. Um, so you have three different colors of beets arranged in this cube pumpernickel and herring. And it was just a wonderful combination. So that's Moscow. And this was probably the most beautiful challah I've ever seen. Um, it was also in Moscow. Um, you could see here somebody, it looks like somebody cut a slice. This was in our hotel at the breakfast. Somebody cut a slice, but then they, maybe they felt that they shouldn't have cut a hala and they placed the <laughs> slice back. Okay, now we are in Warsaw, Poland. So the donut that we have here in the States, um, this is really where it came from. Uh, this is called the Pontek and it's a jelly donut. And this place has been in existence forever, well before the war. Um, and it's the same family that runs it. This is all they do. They do not make any other pastry, just these donuts. Um, and on, there was like a, a holiday in Poland uh, where everybody eats donuts. So there was a line usually of people waiting up to three hours for a box of these donuts. This is one of my favorite restaurants in Warsaw. Um, you walk in and you're greeted with this arrangement. This is their dessert table. Um, and the dessert and the flowers change with season. So here, this is their apple cake, Napoleon, all sorts of uh, chocolate cakes or uh, they're very big uh, on pavlovas with creams and fruit. This dish, this is a salad. This is also Warsaw Poland. So here you have layers of lettuce, goat cheese, plum sauce, herbs, And this we had with potatoes. Um, they were baked in the oven with um, some cheese and olive oil. And I thought that it was so cool that they came, uh, they were baked. They basically put um, little pieces of stick and uh, put it in the oven like that. And this, um, this is zucchini, flowers, eggplant, goat cheese, and lentils. And this is a small restaurant. This is a husband and wife. He used to be, I think he worked for Google, um, got tired of it, and husband and wife decided to open their own restaurant. Um, and it's a, actually a very, very popular restaurant. Um, and this is another one of my favorite places in Warsaw. Um, young husband and wife, um, they open this beautiful restaurant and they serve gorgeous food. This is French toast 
and this was um, yogurt, this was breakfast, yogurt with um, fruits. Now, this is also Warsaw, Poland. This is the hottest ticket in town. It's Sunday breakfast at the JCC of Warsaw. Um, they opened the doors at 11 a.m. There was always a very long line of people waiting. Um, Poles, uh, Poles, tourists, uh, Jews, non-Jews, everybody uh, lines up, but a lot of Jews come in to sort of like, it's, it's the time to schmooze, meet, meet people. So what they do is you have long tables. Uh, there was a serving table where you have all these salads. You have um, cottage cheese, beets, barley, egg salad, uh, roasted vegetables, um, candied fruit. You have, this is called the chwodnik. This is the cold beet soup um, with vegetables. Um, by the way, this is boket tov, but it's in, in, when you write it in Polish, it, it looks like it's boket but it's really boket but that's how it's spelled in Polish. Um, so after people have the soup and the sides, the main course comes in and it's a shakshuka. And each table gets a skillet like this and it's all you share with the people that are sitting next to you. And in any country that I am in, I always go to the produce market, um, no matter what the season. Um, and summer, of course, is the best season uh, because you have the greatest variety um, of um, produce. Um, this was a beautiful eclair. This is Warsaw again. It was a blueberry eclair with, with really delicate cream. And this layer was a layer of super thin white chocolate with some blueberry um, on it. Okay, now we are in Paris. This restaurant um, is, he serves each dish in a super creative way. So here you have a bowl, you have some moss, stones, and this is Brussels sprout mousse. And here you could see little um, roasted pieces of Brussels sprouts. This, rest, this is a, a, a pastry shop in Paris. Um, now Paris, I don't even know how many pastry shops they have, but there was an overabundance of pastry shops in Paris. Um, and each one is beautiful. Um, and I love how creative um, some of them are. So this one, um, it's called Pastry of the Dreams. Um, and they display their pastry under these domes. And these are all, ref there's ref this is, these are refrigerator domes. Um, so you just walk in and you walk around this table and you choose your pastry and then they go into the back and, and bring you a, a beautiful box. This is Cafe Brez um, and they only set, serve crepes. Not regular crepes that can be purchased on the street. These are buckwheat crepes. Um, and this one is my favorite. This is a crepe, this is a morning crepe with eggs and lox and dill and parsley. And it's quite delicious. Now, Poilain is one of the most famous bakeries in Paris. Um, Mr. Poilain, um, was a young apprentice. Um, he had an incredible love of make of baking bread. He loved to bake bread in the very old fashioned way of mixing all the ingredients with his hands. Um, he opened this shop 
and and this shop was incredibly popular. Um, I, I'm not sure. I think it was in maybe year 2000. Don't quote me. Um, Mr. Poilain and his wife um, passed away in a helicopter accident. So now there was this most popular bakery in Paris uh, with no owner. Their 18 year old daughter, who at the time I believe she was studying at Harvard, she decided to take over the family business. So she started running it and she has been incredibly successful. She has the same passion for ba bread baking as her father did. Um, and now they have a few locations throughout Paris and they have two bakeries in London. Um, and I think that that's it. Um, and they ship this bread all over the world. I actually tried to ship it here as a, a, a surprise for my family, but it was just too expensive to ship. Um, so they have breads. They have flan. Their flan is absolutely outstanding. They have this chanson au pomme, which is their uh, pastry with baked apple in it. And this is just like an open variation of the same thing. Pain au chocolat, which is a chocolate croissant and a regular butter croissant. They're also very well known for their biscuits. Um, and usually they come in this uh, like a round biscuit. They're delicious, uh, like a shortbread cookie. But sometimes on Mother's Day, they do a heart. Um, and their bread, I always uh, fly back home with um, some of their bread in my carry-on luggage. Dupin et des Idées is another incredible bakery in Paris. Um, now, this man, who opened this bakery. Uh, he is about 42 now. He used to be in the fashion industry, got tired of it, opened a, a, a bakery that also is incredibly popular. And this is their signature bread. Um, it's a nice, nutty, smoky bread. It's really dense. It's, it's, it's really terrific. All you need is just butter and you don't need anything else. This um, pistachio escargot is one of their best sellers. Um, and pictures of this uh, pastry are like all over the internet. This is a very popular um, uh, thing that he makes. This is a lemon meringue in a small little um, coffee shop in the Marais, which is uh, the Jewish area of um, Paris. Now you might think that this is going to, the first time I saw it, I felt this is going to be so overwhelmingly sweet, but it really wasn't. Um, you have a thin layer, layer of the lemon and a lot of the <laughs> meringue. This is what it looks like um, when just two pieces are sliced. Are, are not there um, and it's it's outrageously delicious I highly recommend um, this is an eclair shop and they have um, you walk in and you're greeted by maybe 20 well, 15 variations of eclairs each one is more beautiful than the rest This beauty is from a pastry shop called the Pushkin Cafe. Um, originally, Pushkin Cafe was a restaurant that opened in Moscow, but they um, opened uh, uh, one restaurant in Paris and two big uh, just pastry shops. And this was, um, this part wasn't so good because it was quite heavy, but right here was a, a very creamy, uh, kind of rose tasting pastry. 
This one is from a, a great bakery uh, called uh, Gerard Mulla, um, and this was a pineapple pastry. I love creative stuff. Um, and I have to say, sometimes some of these really beautiful um, pastries, maybe they're not as quite as delicious, um, but this happened to be really great. Um, now, when I'm in Paris, um, I usually get really inspired by seeing all the beautiful um, pastries. So I, I buy a pastry and then I find a, a, a special place to take a photo of it. Um, well, um, whoever is with me, uh, be it my mom or uh, my kids or Rob, um, they know that they have to sit and wait for the photography to be done and then uh, the pastry can be enjoyed. Um, so this was um, a marinated baked pear and this was a marinated baked apple. And they're sitting on, um, this one is a tart. This is just like a, a um, this looks like a, Filo dough, kind of like a, yeah. Um, and there were um, some caramel on it and they were just exquisite. And this was from a bakery that specializes in everything with caramel. Now, Pierre Hermé is considered the top uh, pastry chef in all of France. Um, he has been in the pastry business for a very long time. His creations are gorgeous and delicious. Um, this is his very uh, famous croissant. Um, now, this croissant is a regular butter croissant and the flakes as well as the um, filling inside is a blend. And this is something that he actually invented. It's a blend of lychee fruit, rose and raspberry. And this is his um, seasonal cake. Um, most good pastry shops, um, do not use fruit that is not in season. This is his um, passion fruit and strawberry tart. Um, he, his um, pastry shop is near the Luxembourg garden. So whenever I buy his pastry, um, I always go to, um, to the Luxembourg garden and I take photographs there. And these are his macaron many different flavors. He usually does very creative flavors. So it's not just vanilla and uh, strawberry or chocolate, but he will do ginger, he will do tomato, he will do many different um, variations. Now, Pierre Hermé was always considered the top chef, pastry chef in Paris, but a young newcomer named Cedric Grolet um, is sort of knocking him off the uh, pedestal now. He is um, a young guy, very handsome, very thin. I don't know how uh, he could be so thin and this is what he does for a living. He started as a pastry chef at the Le Maurice uh, Hotel in Paris, uh, but then he um, opened his own uh, shop this is his most famous pastry. Um, uh, it's called the hazelnut. And inside you have hazelnut and you have cream, a uh, little sprinkling of nuts. And uh, this is a, um, uh, what do you call it? A shortbread tart. Now he became most famous for creating pastries like this. Um, and it's, again, seasonal. This is his clementine. So you have a hard shell. When you break it, you have a layer of cream. And inside, he will either do uh, chunks of the fruit, 
oh, or if it's just the mousse of whatever the fruit is. So that's the clementine. This is this apple. So this must have been, uh, this was taken in the fall. And this is his um, famous um, pistachio tart. Now, when you, um, he's open, he opens at noon and he closes at about 3 p.m. But by 2.30, most of the pastry is gone. He only usually has five different varieties of pastries that he's selling. So when you want to make sure that you get the tart, you line up, I usually line up at about quarter to 12. So I got a spot right by the window and I got to see how this little beauty is made. So here you have the shortbread shell. It's called the pat sable, shortbread. Here, this is first layer. This was kind of like a, a nutty ganache. Then here you have, um, this is pistachio. He fill, so it's one, two, third layer, followed by a cream, which is also a pistachio cream, and then pistachio powder, and then sprinkling of pistachios. Okay. This is another um, pastry chef whom I love, Felipe Conticini. Um, yes, he's French. Um, and he makes this incredible tart. So it's basically an apple thinly sliced and fanned out, caramel poured over it and baked like that. It's delicious. And this, this might not look like much. Um, this, this pastry shop is called uh, Des Gâteaux et du Pain. And this is really the only woman pastry chef in Paris that is um, a top rated. And this is her, this is what she does in the fall. And I usually try to be in Paris in the fall just for this. And I know that it's like, uh, it kind of looks like it's nothing. It's the most incredible pastry. This is her blueberry tart. So here you have tenderized wild blueberries, cream infused with hay inside, and you have the shortbread shell. And this is a picture of it sliced it's not a very good picture i took this was in the evening already inside the hotel room and the light was bad but it's just it's like a little it's like a blueberry cheesecake and it's outrageously good and i love that it's a woman and there are, it, it's basically just men uh who are um who have like the top pastry shops in paris so i love that uh and this is her other creation and this is a little tart. It's green tomato, lime, fresh mint, and it's garnished with celery flowers. And it's so refreshing. This is our summer creation. And this, this is a fairly new uh, shop. Uh, this is a gelato shop. Uh, lovely woman, uh, this is in the six around these mall. lovely woman opened it. Um, and I've had actually a great conversation with her because uh, I was just so taken with, with what she, what, what I ate. Um, so she came up with basically the idea to take the inside of a fruit, create a gelato out of it, and put it back in the shell and serve it like that. So here is a walnut and it's a walnut gelato. And this was like a, another variation of a lemon and this was a lemon sorbet. And it was just fantastic. Um, now in Paris, I love to go to produce markets, um, not only to buy 
uh, the produce. We usually rent apartments, so I do buy produce, but I just love seeing how beautifully everything is arranged and they take such care um, with what they're selling and pride. And I'm always really impressed. I love this. This is a street market and it looks like a big mess, but it's actually not. Um, and, and if you look at it, it's, it's just a, a gorgeous arrangement. And this is berries, summer berries, and a basket of vegetables. And this was actually, this basket of vegetables was just like in the middle of the street by a regular supermarket. And I thought that it was just gorgeous. Another arrangement. And there was one produce market um, and at the end of it, uh, by the exit, there was this really fascinating Frenchman um, he speaks Japanese, he's really talkative and very outgoing. And he makes, they call them galettes, but they're really pancakes. It's an apple pancake uh, with shredded onion and a little bit of cheese. And this is, this is what I ate. And it was, it was just exquisite. <laughs> I love potato pancakes and I love this uh, Parisian variety. Now, what I like to do when I'm in Paris is um, when my family is still um, asleep, I run out, I buy food, and then we go to the park, and this is how we have breakfast. <laughs> um, I make this arrangement, and um, we sit and we enjoy a leisurely breakfast in the park. Yes, some of the French people in tourists uh, stare, but I don't care. Okay, now we are in Tel Aviv. Um, in Tel Aviv, I have two bakeries that I absolutely adore. This is called Boulangerie 96. And this is quite far. This is a little bit, uh, this is a 10 minute walk, uh, five minute walk from Sorona. Um, it's where uh, Google headquarters is. And not that many tourists actually go there. It's a lot of locals, but I fell in love with um, the pastry chef with his creations. And, um, and so I always take a bus there uh, or walk. It's a, a good 40 minute walk, uh, but I figured I'll earn um, what I'm eating that way. So what he created that is really unusual is this is his variation of a croissant. It's a square croissant. Um, super delicate um, uh, croissant pastry and inside is filled with sweet cream. And this is his summer fall version because you still have strawberries and raspberries and blueberries. And this is his winter version with peanut butter and different nuts, since berries are not available. And this is when I was there during Hanukkah. So these are his souvganiyot. This one, if you can see, that's shredded halva. It's a halva souvganiyot. This is a strawberry. This one was marshmallow, and this one was chocolate. Now this, whenever I fall in love with a place, I sort of do a tribute photo. So this is my tribute photo to Boulangerie 96. These are all the things that I love um, to get from Boulangerie 96. So this was done Friday when I went for my Shabbat shopping. This challah in our family has been voted the best challah. Um, it's really worth a schlep. It's a good, uh, good crumb, good dense challah. Um, this is a super moist um, lemon pound cake. 
This bread is a Nordic bread with great different seeds. These are the different croissants. As you can see, this was done in October. So this is a fig on top because it was fig season. This is his multigrain bread. This is a focaccia. And these two baguettes are um, onion baguettes. And they're just, they're, they're, they're delicious. Now, Carmel Market is probably my most fam favorite place um, in Tel Aviv. And I just love to walk around and take photographs of the different stands and the different produce. And just watching how the, the seasons change with whatever um, they're selling and the dried fruit and the great cheese. This place, this is this place is in the Carmel Market. It's a cheese shop, um, but they actually have cheese and butter um, from many different countries. They have a lot. They have Polish um, sour cream. They have French butter. So that's a great place uh, to go. And this is the Levinsky Market, which is the place to go for dried fruit and spices. And uh, about a few months ago, the Levinsky Market became a pedestrian street. So there was no um, car traffic. So it's really terrific. Now they uh, have um, chairs and tables set up on the street. So um, little cafes um, opened up. So it's really wonderful. And of course, you need to have halva, many different halvas and dried fruit. Oh, another halva photo. These spices are terrific. We always buy these spices. You can add these to rice or sprinkle it on a salad. And this is my favorite um, dried fruit guy. So you start your day in Tel Aviv with great juice. This juice stand is on uh, the corner of Dizengoff and Ben-Gurion. And this is the best juice place. Um, they will make whatever combination, shake or juice you, you'd like. This is Lehamin Bakery in Tel Aviv. Now, Lehamin Bakery is open 24 hours a day, but they're kosher, so they're uh, closed for Shabbat. Um, so they close by like 2 or 3 p.m. on Friday, open up at 11 p.m. on Saturday. The best time to go there is Friday for their brunch. Remember, because their work week is different, Friday is brunch day. So on Friday, you get this tray and it has herring and lox and um, goat cheese and olives and egg salads and um, eggplant and many different types of cheese and you get a cookie and you get tiramisu and you get a wonderful um, tomato salad. This is another picture of it. And you get a bread basket included with it. And then you get eggs. Now these are my favorite eggs. Um, I've actually, before I started going to Le Hamin, I didn't know that you could add chives and dill and parsley to your eggs. And it's just the most spectacular combination. So this is pretty much when Rob and I are every other Friday. Um, there was a bit of a line, so it's good to get there early. Uh, this is the close up of the eggs. It's really delicious. Okay, this is another restaurant. This is called Saluf and Sons, and it's a Yemenite restaurant. Now, um, this bread is called the Kubane. I'm probably mispronouncing it. The dough is made and it, uh, it's stuffed into these um, forms that are put into the oven 
they are tightly covered and it's supposed to be put into the oven when you're done cooking for Shabbat. And then the residual heat is baking the bread overnight. So when you wake up on Shabbat, you have um, ready-made fresh bread. And it really, it, it tastes and looks like a very dense, buttery, delicious challah. You just break it, rip it apart, and it's just, it's delicious, and it's served with tahina and these chopped up tomatoes with um, olive oil. This is my favorite dish at a Greek restaurant, and these are beet ravioli. It's super thin slices of beet, uh, mascarpone cheese, or sometimes goat cheese, actually it's goat cheese inside, and you have olive oil, and uh, parsley chopped up. Now recently we started, we've always liked going up to the North Port, um, but we've discovered that the Friday morning market is really terrific. Um, and there was one farmer, this is his variety of tomatoes, and I just, I was just so overwhelmed. Um, and each one is delicious and it tastes different than, than the next. And um, I usually get like uh, one of those plastic containers and you can mix and match. And that's what I usually do Friday morning. And then we enjoy them uh, for a few days. Miznon, uh, which is in Tel Aviv, and there was one in Paris, there was one in Vienna, there was one in New York, um, was started by Eyal Shani, uh, a terrific guy. He opened this restaurant. I consider him to be the king of vegetable. Um, his, what he claims is, was his beginning uh, was the discovery of um, using the tomato in a very different way. Um, and I'll talk about that when I show you the next slide. But this is what I love, because he's also known for um, doing different things with a cauliflower. Cauliflower has always been sort of considered uh, secondary, um, but he roasts a cauliflower. And this is my favorite pita with um, cauliflower that has been um, roasted and then mixed with tahini sauce and you've got scallions there um, and it's exquisite. This is, he has a few different restaurants. This one is called Svonabraxis and this is where you get his famous roasted cauliflower, sweet potato, this is broccoli, string beans, and his slice of bread. Now, the bread is baked on premises and it always, he serves everything. Um, he doesn't believe in plates. Everything is served on these uh, cardboard pieces. Delicious fresh bread comes in a paper bag with a slice of onion to add a little bit of a flavor to it. And it comes with this, it's like a sour cream or creme fraiche. So, what he likes to do is he cuts the tomato and he squeezes all the juice and the pits into the sour cream. And this is how he uses the tomato. He adds a little bit of um, chilies into it. So this is, has a bit of a bite to it. My most favorite thing that he does are these string beans. Um, this is the greatest bean you'll ever eat. It's, um, you cook the beans in salted water, take them out, put them into ice bath, so that shocks them, so they retain the nice green color. And then you bathe them in olive oil, lemon, minced garlic, and kosher salt, and you coat them, and it's just exquisite. I made it last week, Rob loved it. This is our favorite thing to get while in Tel Aviv. And then I also love these uh, beets carpaccio, super thinly sliced beets. 
these little flakes is uh, ground horseradish, and then you have cream cheese. Now, Hakosem, which is everybody goes to Hakosem when they go to Tel Aviv, uh, was started by this really nice guy. Um, and it's a falafel stand, but it's the most uh, popular falafel stand in Tel Aviv. I always get the platter because I get a lot of falafel. You get this deli delicious hummus. You get a salad. But this, this is the greatest rice you'll ever eat. It's rice with sautéed onions and chickpeas on top. I promise you, it's fantastic. And this is his sabih, which is a, um, a fried eggplant slice. And his falafel is beautiful and green, lots of parsley in it, fantastic flavor, and it's just the greatest thing. Now, Buke Cafe, which is what I took Judy to once, and we all loved it. <laughs> it's another place, it's just dairy. They do these trays um, and you get a tray and you share it with people. And you have um, cauliflower and tahina and labane and eggs and salads and sweet potatoes. Um, this is a tray to share and you also get, um, whatchamacallit, a potato bureka. Um, that comes also with tahina and pickles and egg. I want you to know I go there every time I'm there now that you introduce me to that it's place. Delicious, it's right? Ama amazing, amazing. It's terrific. But the uh, last time was the first time that I actually got their French toast. And I know it looks like a mess on the cardboard, but it's just, it's exquisite. And it was covered in um, date syrup um crumbs nutella tahina which i know the combination might sound a little funky but it is it's outstanding now another one of our play, favorite places to eat in tel aviv and it's it's kosher it's called hanan margilan and it is um a Bukharan restaurant run by a Bukharan family. Um, so here, this is called the Dushpara. Um, it's a um, beef soup. It's broth with pieces of beef and dumplings. Um, right here, this is called the Monty. And these are like a, like a crepla, I guess, filled with meat, but they're delicious and very moist and really delicate. Um, and this, this is called the plav, and it's rice with big chunks of cooked beef, um, like a choland beef type, and carrots. Um, you get the salad. This Bukharan bread, I would say, don't even bother. Don't fill up on the bread. It's not that great. Get all these other things. They're outstanding. We, we, we love, love, love this restaurant. And the people are super nice. It's husband and wife and their parents, I mean, her parents running the restaurant. Sweet people, nice restaurant. Doesn't look like much, but it's delicious food. This is another restaurant that we absolutely love, Kosher again, and it's in Tel Aviv. And there is another one uh, at the Mahana Yehuda in Jerusalem. And this is called Azura. And this rice comes with these tiny little like vermicelli noodles. And it's delicious. You could just eat. I eat this rice without anything. Um, whenever I buy it um, to, to take home, I always kind of hope that there'll be a lot left over. And I do have to admit, I do sit with a, a container of this warm rice and I eat it as dessert. Uh, it's that good. Um, and this is this great, like a, a stew, beef stew with chunks of potato. 
um, and this restaurant, you walk in and all these dishes are made in these huge pots and you could see everything right there in the kitchen. So you just uh, look at the menu, it's all in Hebrew, uh, order what you like and it comes to you within minutes. And this is a close up of that beef. I mean, how great is this? It's, it's spectacular. This is Shimon, the king of soups. And this is in the Yemenite quarter, right on the side of the Carmel market. And this is um, our favorite Yemenite restaurant. Uh, this is the Yemenite chicken soup. And it comes with this bread, which I know I'm going to butcher it. It's called the lachuch. And it's a spongy Yemenite pancake-like bread. And it's, um, and it's cooked only on one side. Um, so that's that one. And this is their version of the saluf, which is the bread that I showed you before, the one that's baked all, all Friday. But this is their variation. Um, and this chicken soup comes with um, all different um, uh, Yemenite spices and this uh, fenugreek dip. And the woman who runs it is a real character. She will talk to you forever. And she um, always says that she's the star in the family. She's really a hoop. Now, at the North Port, um, the um, market, the indoor marketplace uh, was started by this lovely young woman called Michal Ansky. And her mother has probably one of the most popular stands there. And she's called Sherry. And this is called Sherry's Herring. And this is a spectacular herring sandwich that they make right there while you wait. So when Rob and I go there, he gets the herring and I get the salmon. So you get this fresh baguette. Yes, he's reminding me. And you do get a shot of vodka with the herring. Um, so you have the baguette, cream cheese or butter, whichever you prefer, herring, um, and these spicy chilies. Um, and with the salmon, you get cream cheese and you get some uh, cucumber slices and everything is sliced right there. They don't, nothing is, none, none of the vegetables are pre-sliced. And they also use uh, Ayal Shani's, the Miznon guy's technique of cutting a tomato and squeezing the seeds and the juice of the tomato all over the salmon. And this is what it looks like. This is one herring and one lox uh, sandwich. This is another place that uh, Rob and I discovered. And this is a pita, but it's sort of like a, a, like a falafel, but it's a reverse. So he makes the falafel and he puts it into um, a waffle maker and then he splits it open and he fills it with all sorts of vegetables and hummus and tahina. So instead of having a falafel ball inside the pita, you get the falafel waffle with the filling inside. We thought that was incredibly creative. This place is in the Florentine neighborhood. It's called Shmaya. And this is a lovely, tiny little place run by, it's kosher, vegetarian, run by a wonderful man who wakes up early in the morning. He goes to the Carmel Market. It's just him. He goes to the Carmel Market. Whatever vegetables he sees that um, he, he strike his fancy, he buys. He cooks in gigantic pots and he just has one help, a waitress that helps to carry the food to the table. Um, 
and you basically tell him how large of a plate you'd like and you choose one thing uh so like let's say you know you could say i'd like a sweet potato and then he does this arrangement of all the other vegetables um and it's really like going to if you had a an an israeli grandma this is what sitting at the table uh in her kitchen would be like uh, and the atmosphere is just terrific and he's lovely um looks like omar sharif um now this bread okay this restaurant you don't have to go to but i thought that this was just a really clever way of making bread they take dough wrap it around this um stick and stick it in the in a clay oven like this and this is the bread that arrives at the table and they also make these um fish kebabs it's just fish and vegetables um spinach leaves um a little bit of um marinated paprika and it's and it's an exquisite dish this is another place or we're almost done um another place at the carmel market this is called uh shakshuka and they serve different types of shakshukas and vegetables and uh, fried fish like this i love these little fish they have a lot of bones it's a lot of work but it's delicious and this is mantaray a restaurant that is right on the beach and we like to go there for a delicious breakfast with a, a view that cannot be beat and this is my homage to the Carmel Market. Um, I figured I go to the Carmel Market almost every day. So I figured I'll take a picture um, of everything that I really love about the Carmel Market. Um, the dried fruit, the baklava, and the, the bagels, and the Jerusalem bagels, and all the different produce. Um, and this is a, a restaurant at the Northport Kitchen Market. And I love this because this is their appetizer and it's tomato. So you have um, dried tomato. You have, this dust is tomato dust. And you also have um, marinated tomatoes underneath. And to finish uh, restaurant, Dalal, and this is their fish shawarma. And I guarantee you it's the best thing you've ever had. Um, and it's shawarma, marinated onions, I mean, but it's fish shawarma. And you have a little bit of hummus and olive oil, and it's fantastic. And that's it. Wow. Wow, wow. is all I could say. <laughs> I, I think Joanne should uh, leave. <laughs> that is amazing. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Wendy, I, I didn't hear Wendy, you. You were going to say that Joanna should lead all of us around the world on a food thing, and I'm with you. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> Joanna is definitely the person to travel with. She's unbelievable. <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> so now you know. Develop this. Hmm? How did Wait, you I'm going to mute everyone except for you. One second. It's hard to hear. Okay, go on, Norma. Joanna, how did you develop this with, you know, the pictures and the interest in the food? I don't hear Joanna. Unmute Joanna. Okay. So, um, you know, we go to all these different places and I started looking at it and I'm thinking, you know what, some of these things are really beautiful. Um, so I started taking pictures and um, at times I know it's, it's, um, it's a lot because I would go to a pastry shop and I would look at the pastries and then I would buy a pastry and then I would walk around Paris thinking, okay, I need to find just the right spot to take a picture of this pastry. And I... Uh, I lost uh, uh, my family. Uh, they would just usually go back to the apartment. Um, but then 
I felt um, before going anywhere, I like to uh, read different blogs to get ideas of where to go. So I started writing a, a food blog, um, uh, just sort of a guide for people if they, you know, sort of are going to a new city and they don't know where to eat. Um, so it sort of uh, kind of evolved. Um, but I also enjoy um, taking photographs of really beautiful things. And I have a wall in our um, dining area of my uh, most favorite um, food um, items that we've enjoyed over the many years. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Terrific. Well, Judy has been my guide for Israel. She's given us lots of places to go. Many years ago, yeah. Judy, we went to the yogurt place in Tel Aviv. Yeah every place you recommended. So yep. it's funny, Tamara Yogurt now owns that juice shop yep. that, that yep. Um, Joanna showed the picture of. That juice shop has been there since I was a kid. I mean, I, 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 mean, I think Tamara Yogurt bought it, but it is, it, like Joanna said, it's an amazing place. All her restaurants, really. I, I can personally attest to her taste. I mean, really incredible. Joanna, I'm surprised you, you don't gain like 100 pounds every time you travel. Yeah. How is that? <laughs> well, I, we usually, on vacation, we do uh, walk like, you know, I have my uh, Fitbit and it, it's like uh, over 20,000 steps. So that helps. Joanna, many years ago, my daughter was in Paris for a semester. And I wrote on the chat, every corner there was a beautiful pastry shop with yep. bugs and butterflies, you know, everything. But I said to Roberta, the women are so thin. And she said they have very small portions. Yes. They really, you know, they buy one pastry and they share with their husband or they really are very disciplined and they can take a couple of bites. I really don't know how they do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much Shimana, you for sharing this really with thanks. us. It was amazing. My and, and guys, now you know who to call when you go to Israel or any place else. Absolutely. You, Joanna, Joanna, if I wanted to look onto your blog, is that possible? Yes, sure. Joanna. Do you want to um, put, can you write it over here to everybody on the side if you... Um, you can write down on the bottom or you know what give it to me the name of your blog and i can send it to okay. everybody okay because it is fun just to look at the pictures it's amazing that's my figure right <laughs> it's great it's great it's amazing okay. thank you so, so much thank you all and i will see you all sunday morning for joel Simon's talk at 11 yes I can't wait. at four can't wait you have a great day planned Bye, bye bye everyone. Bye. Thank, bye. You. Thank you. Thank you, Joanna. What a My treat. pleasure. Really it's a treat, treat really.